Soccer Community. Hello, everybody. What's up? I'm Adam Grace. Welcome to Afternoon Astonishments from Conjure Community, the world's best magic club. This is a show where we dive into the mind-blowing magic performed by the world's top magicians. And I'm here with uh, Aaron and Alex and Mike. And today we're going to look at one of our very favorite magicians in the world, Mr. Ricky J. Oh. Would you say this was called Ricky J Plays Poker? Because I haven't seen this footage. Um, well, this first thing we're going to watch is is called Ricky J Plays Poker. Now, I haven't seen it either until I, I watched it just the other day, and I said, well, this is going to be great for after an astonishment. He obviously is on the top of his game uh, right here in this uh, part of his life. It's pretty amazing. Let's Let's just dive right in and watch it, shall we? It's a manufacturer's guarantee about certain imperfections in the card and if you find them their guarantee is they'll replace the cards for you but i want to play a little poker with you guys and make a slightly different kind of uh, a slightly different kind of guarantee uh, i guarantee that i'm going to play you a game a five card draw and i guarantee that i'm going to win and of course you guys are not worried because i'm not asking you to put up your own money so this is not exactly the highest stakes situation you can imagine but it still should be pretty cool jeff can i get you to do this i'm one of those there's a lot you can learn about somebody by the way check him out it's interesting yeah it's good good solid ripple interesting and i'm going to deal out a couple of hands to you but i'm only going to deal out four cards instead of the traditional five in five card draw okay and i'm going to ask you not to look at them yet but you can gather them in if you feel more comfortable having them closer to you and watch me by the way watch me scrupulously as i deal the cards to make sure that this is honest and above board ha 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 now you each have four cards and because you know in most cases know me personally but know that i have some sort of reputation <laughs> as being capable with a deck of cards i'm going to make you an unusual offer right now before we complete the, the deal i'm going to say to you if you think perhaps i was stacking the cards perhaps i was dealing from the bottom that somehow i dealt myself a better hand than any of you i'm going to allow you the opportunity to switch your cards with mine <laughs> and I'm going to allow each player to do that. JJ, without looking at your cards, without looking at mine, do you want to switch for my hand? No. No. Jeff. Yeah, I'll switch. You're going to switch. Remember that this happened. Don't look at him. We'll place him here. Willie, would you like to switch cards? Would you like to play your own? I'd like to play uh, my own. Okay, that's fine. John? Me too. You would too. Eddie, would you like to switch or would you like to play mine? I'll play yours. Oh. Okay, you'll play mine, I'll play yours. Now I'm gonna make you another unusual, another unusual opportunity. Remember I said I'm gonna guarantee that I win. I'm now gonna deal you all your last cards, all right? And I'm gonna play my card. I'm not gonna be able to change whatever that card is, but I'm now gonna give you all the options of looking at this card and deciding whether you want that card to join your hand or not. What poker player would be crazy enough to do that? The answer is me. JJ, you can now look at your hands. Take a look at them. One at a time, we'll do this. I'm going to hold them up. Maybe the camera wants to see them as well. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to look. Okay, and I'm now going to offer you this chance. You know what? That's fine. Do you want to add this card to your hand or no. not? You don't. I'm going to give you a chance. We'll discard this to take any card from the talent, from the remainder of the deck, take one out, and have it join your hand. Anyone. Okay. But do it quick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, take your time, it's fine. <laughs> well, the card you may be looking for could be in somebody else's hand. I don't know. Jeff, hold yours close to the vest. Don't let anybody see them. All right, I'm going to put these down. Here's your choice. Would you like this card, Jeff, to join your hand or not? No. No. I'm going to discard it, and I'm going to give you the option of taking any one of these cards to add to your hand. Would you reach across and take any one out from the remainder of the deck? You know, you could be beating me with two cards, you know. Uh, Willie, here's your card. Would you like to keep it or change it? Uh, uh, change it. Change it. Uh, take out any card. Take out any card. I'm going to discard this. Take out any card and have it join your hand. Nothing is uh, helpful, so I'll just take. You're fine. Take the highest card. It's great. John, take a look at your cards. Would you like this card to join your hand or not? No. No. All right. I'm going to ask you to take one of these as well. 
But understand these options and understand my guarantee. You've chosen cards, you've switched cards, the cards have been shuffled, they've been cut, they've been dealt, it's but I hand. guarantee I will win you in a hand of draw. All right. All right. I will win you. Last chance for you. Eddie, take a look at your cards. Do you want to <laughs> include this card in your hand? Oh, I do not. You do not. We'll discard that and take any one of the remaining cards. Um, I can't really see them. Huh? Whatever. Uh, right, okay. So there we go. Five hands of poker and mine. JJ, turn them over. Let's see what you have. Trip queens. Trip queens, and you're complaining. What kind of guy is that? Trip queens. What do you have, Jeff? Pair of eights. Pair of eights. Well, I can understand why you're a little perturbed. Willie. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Trip nines. Trip nines. Again, a good Wish hand. You've got hand. pretty good hands in a poker game. Pair of sevens for Riley. Trip fives. Trip fives. Trip fives for Eddie G. Let's just take a look and see what I have here. Wow, this is not what I expected either. <laughs> but I did make a guarantee. And remember, Eddie could have had my cards. And JJ did switch, I meaning switched. that at one point Jeff, I had hit you? cards. I switched. Oh, Jeff switched. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to drag this out, but I do think that. Uh, oh, perfect. Oh, 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 yeah, that's Well, I, I should point out there won't be too much in the way of explanation here. <laughs> uh, we should stop for a moment. I first of all, what if? What a pleasure just to watch him do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna ask you this. What like for anybody who's watching this who thinks, well, I would love to learn that routine, what do you grade the what is the level of expertise there in that, Aaron? Well, I mean, I or difficulty. Difficulty. Well, I didn't notice any difficulty at all once the card started moving. Uh, Alex, I mean, it's a not what you'd call a sleight of hand based miracle, really. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Is that? Oh wait, is this afternoon astonishment? Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't talk. And he, it's Ricky J. He's cheating, obviously. He's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Professional cheater. He's cheating, obviously. Um, He's Alex, playing poker. He plays poker. And incidentally, wait a minute, just because details matter. This is a good lesson for magicians and non-magicians. This is sort of like the post Allison Hannigan world, right? Uh, what would P and T do? You know, who knows? What would P and T see? That's what you say. So here's the question. Did these people shuffle directly before giving Ricky J the cards? Or do you remember that they did? There was at least one person that shuffled that deck before he went into the dealing procedure. Uh huh. Now we're looking at a bunch of uh, actors from yes. Chicago sitting around a table with a magician in Chicago and a film crew. So who can say? I just know that Ricky felt and looked very comfortable. You know what I really liked about it is I never get to see Ricky do a trick that isn't like part of the act. I felt like I was watching Ricky J do some card tricks that weren't really presentation based it was kind of like like i've always felt a little uncomfortable with a trick like that it's it's almost like that was the closest we'll ever get to seeing ricky j do out of this world right <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you like to see ricky j deal second deals and stuff like that i heard there's a head-to-head -head section of this <laughs> Is that that's what talking? he does next he demonstrates the second deal is with great proficiency Oh, great proficiency. Let's see. <laughs> this sounds like old Charlie Miller, but they said they wanted to see it. Let's, I want to see Ricky J deal a second deal. <laughs> All right, let's watch it. Wind up cheating people from the beginning of the time that they think about going the game, going to the game till after the game is finished. And, and one of the ways hustlers always used to work, you know, this on trains especially, is they play for cigars, they play for drinks, they'd make it look incredibly casual, and then it would build up into a dollar or two, and soon it would be like J.J.'s right. game with hundreds of dollars. And then you can wind up with proposition bets, winning money after the cards go back into the case. So there are lots of opportunities, and we'll talk a little about some of them as well.
So let's say you had a card on the top of the deck that you wanted to keep, like say the Ace of Spades. And so the idea would be like if all you guys were at the game, I would simply deal the cards to everybody, but I would get the Ace of Spades. So that's called second dealing. That's the idea. And what actually happened, I mean, this does feel a little awkward for me actually telling you what I'm doing. You know, so the that's Ace of first, isn't it? The idea is that the Ace of Spades is on the top of the deck, and I'm dealing underneath the Ace of Spades. So I'm making it look like I'm dealing with top card, but I'm keeping the ace of spades. That's there. fantastic. Well, that's, that so that, fantastic. that's what that's called second game. Wow. By the way, if, if you're playing stud poker, it can also be... What you think about that? Well, it's really interesting. First of all, I was thinking I was agreeing with the, our producer. Uh, Ethan was just saying he's bummed that Willie Garson died, and I was just, as a person who does sex in the city uh, with my sweetheart, on principle, always have. Who is that? Had is that it. someone sitting there? At the table? Yeah, it's the bar, bald fellow who was just emoting how excellent that was. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, I would like to, uh, I don't think our friend Mike here has done a lot of second deal practicing yet. Have, have you done a lot of second deal instructional video watching? I've, I've watched some. I've played with it a little bit, but not I I have not done a lot and I cannot do a lot. Well, that's that's it is of dubious value. I mean, I think uh, the thing that Ricky yeah, Alex is nodding. Uh mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing that's good for about as long as Ricky was doing it, you know? Uh because he's a known card expert and he's known to have uh super sneaky fingers, so sneaky that it looks like he's not doing anything. And he's demonstrating those things with a tight little demo. But, you know, Ricky had these teachers. His teachers were really the grandest of the grand old men, like Charlie Miller. And Charlie Miller was a real expert at all kinds of magic. Do you guys remember I was talking with Jonathan Neal about practicing stand-up magic with Charlie Miller? Totally. Yeah, he talked about the secret, the secret relationship that was going on with a couple of the other guys in the LA area that got Charlie's uh, attention when he was in town when it wasn't Jonathan Neil Brown. Yeah, it's very interesting. And Ricky was one of those guys. And uh, Ricky, so Charlie Miller was a real he, Charlie Miller was like younger than Vernon, and they had an interesting, complex relationship. But I would just say that there's a group of people out there that. When it comes down to the taste and love that they have for the sleight of hand with cards, feel like uh, Charlie is, a, if anything, a, a slightly uh, even more rare vintage. I don't well, know. What sets, what sets Ricky apart, though, I think, is his ability to combine all these incredible physical skills and stuff with this intellectual depth that he has. You know, I don't know if Charlie Miller had that that kind of intellectual depth, but. He had an awful lot of professional magic depth, but uh, I guess all I'm saying is what Ricky does, what, to your point, what Ricky certainly has is the ability to make it very interesting to perceive and feel like you're watching him demonstrate a few second deals. That's the key to what you just said, right? I, you know, I, there's there are guys out there whose whose whole thing is not magic so much as being like, you know, gambling expert type magicians, John Scarney and Darwin Ortiz. And, and I dare say that, uh, you know, guys like Ricky J, uh, I like that stuff a lot better because Ricky's always going to be focused more on the story. He's never going to really lead his audience my, consciously to believe that literally just watching him do this stuff. Like even... While he's doing this stuff, which there's some of this stuff type stuff in in, in the actual show, right, Alex? There's mm -hmm. a sequence of this kind of thing in in Fifty Two Assistants. Oh, certainly in Fifty Two Assistants, he's he he is showing off the whole skill set. You're walking away going, "That's the most talented man I've ever seen for sure." And Here's that the best shot right here. monologue that is woven <laughs> through Adam. This is this is the only shot you get right here. You get like this. You get this shot right here, and then you get one other shot of him doing it, which is the closest they ever get to his hands. It's right here. Here it comes right here. Watch. You get to see it from the actual back angle right here. That. Well, it's face up with a pack of bees. I mean, Adam, Yeah. if you ask me the real 
thing about this kind of thing. And of course, anyone who knows real gambling experts knows we aren't them. Like the one thing we learned for certain 30 years ago is that we're magicians and we can use as many lessons as is helpful. But that idea of wanting to actually get that stuff to do it the way they do it. When I met Steve Forty in the year 1997, it was obvious in 20 minutes of meeting that that is when he says it's not magic, he does, he means it. And now it's, what is it, almost 30 years later? And Steve Forty has put out books that describe it for anyone who's interested. And so the thing about it is, if you're watching it on a movie, if you're watching Ricky Jay do a monologue about it and doing it, it ipso facto is a magic piece because the real thing doesn't exist under those circumstances. And if you were to watch Steve Forty on his old YouTube tapes, it's astonishing how little of interest happens. I've got a real treat for you then, because what we're going to watch next is Ricky Jay doing just straight up card routine, <laughs> and he's going to demonstrate great uh, dexterity and skill. I hear he really to. mixes it up, too. I hear he really gets, uh, you know, he gets that theatrical conflict going. This And this one in particular is special, I think, uh, because he does not speak at all. Oh, yeah. You guys ever seen that before? Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Really good. Here's a story about that trick, you know? There is. First of all, had you ever seen that trick before? I, I've never seen that routine. No, not until yesterday. He was famous for that routine. And he, it was one, he, Alex, this is your, you correct me if my understanding of this is wrong. But this is a routine that most of us only ever heard of after Pepe Carroll, Jose Carroll, who's no longer with us, became famous. Uh, he was actually a very, a sexy uh, member of the Escorial, of the Escuela Magia, 
So he was uh, one of uh, Juan and Escano's uh, buddies, and he did a lot of TV, and he was a beautiful looking man, and he did beautiful card magic, and he was very awesome. And uh, and he built a very, very suave version of this trick. But this was Ricky Jay's trick. And Ricky Jay didn't show this trick around magicians. He didn't show anything around magicians. Well, Jose Carroll saw this trick somewhere, saw Ricky do this trick somewhere, and built this trick and used it a lot and became well known for it. And what uh, he was, a, Ricky was a little upset. <laughs> that, that, that's all I ever heard was that Ricky was a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like Ricky's plot. But anyone watching it now will go, oh, yeah, it's a version of that Pepe Carroll trick. Nice. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. So <laughs> I think it's a beautiful trick. And I wanted to do it myself or some version of it. But then I thought, you know, they used to tell me, be a good kid or Ricky will come get you. <laughs> <laughs> like Sweeney Todd, you know. All right. I've got one more for you. Um you know, I this last thing is really I don't know what the context of this is because it, it seems like he's doing a trick for a couple of friends uh, or maybe well you'll you'll see but the trick itself is a trick that's well within the ability of of most magicians I think it's just pretty beautiful the way Ricky handles it and uh, and you can learn quite a bit from from seeing how Ricky J uh, approaches a trick like this all right here we go so I'd like to. Um... I'd like to show you an experiment based on uh, Japanese uh, cinema and a deck of cards. Uh, would you open up the case for me, Clay, sure. and, and uh, take out the advertising cards and the jokers and then start shuffling, uh, start shuffling the cards? I, uh, I'm a great fan of Japanese cinema. I know you've both spent time in Japan. This is really what, what, what I'm dealing with over here. Um, we don't need the, the jokers as well, but do give them a, a thorough shuffle or two. And then I'm going to also have you uh, give Leslie the cards and, and have her shuffle them uh, as well. And you really can shuffle them thoroughly. Matter of fact, I, I ask you to shuffle them thoroughly. Uh, this story is based on uh, a series of Japanese movies called Sword of Vengeance. And it stars Tamisaburo Wakayama, who plays Ito Agami, the decapitator to the Shogun. And uh, uh, very few people have seen Ito Agami. I, I actually have a, a picture of him in my wallet. Uh, in your wallet? Well, actually, on my wallet. <laughs> uh, this is Ito Agami over, over here, which is kind of interesting. Now, you keep shuffling while I, I do this. Shuffling. Yeah, and uh, actually, it's a much better picture of Ito Agami. It's sort of a close-up yes. of, of Ito Agami. Actually, while I have this out, um, I have some of these uh, washi cards uh, as, as well. Uh, which are kind of interesting. And I'm going to uh, take... Do, do you happen to have a Sumi brush? No, no, I'm not. I, I do. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to use the, the Sumi brush and, and make a, a small prediction. I don't want you to see exactly uh, what I've done here, but you can, you can see some of it. So, so let me, let me uh, uh, do this. Uh, and I'm going to cover it up so you, so you can see that there is something. There is some prediction. Um, you know, I, I'm probably one of the only people who, who also has a picture of Mrs. Ito Agami. Um, I, I, I'll show you, actually. Um, I have her here as well. This is, this is uh, Mrs. Ito Agami, which uh, actually one should use to, to, fan, uh, to fan out this. Uh, uh, I think I'll just leave, I'll leave this here. Uh, so you've shuffled the cards very thoroughly. As a matter of fact, you've been shuffling the cards for a moment, so if I can have them back. So, so here's the premise of this. This series of films, uh, which, is called, which is called Sword of Vengeance, is a rather remarkable series. And the thing I, I think that makes it so remarkable is this wonderful relationship of Ito Agami, who, as the official decapitator to the Shogun, is part of an incredible rival clan intrigue. And that rival clan are the Yagyus, the elder Yagyu, especially Retsudo Yagyu, who gets involved in this particular picture. And here's what happens. You've taken a deck of cards and you shuffle them. I haven't changed the order of them. I haven't done anything else with them. What I'm going to actually do is spread them out, but I'm going to tell you we don't need all of them. So I want you to take a big bunch of cards and push them towards yourself. Literally push them towards yourself. Okay. Yeah, push them and push them out of the way. So we will not use them. Now this, this, this film, Ito Agami comes home to his house and finds, this is a dreadful thing to talk about, that his wife has been murdered by ninja assassins. And this is true. There's just no way to, to deal with this other than to tell you this is the absolute truth of the situation. Uh, actually, Clayton, take a bunch of cards and push them towards you, a whole big bunch of cards, and, and we can put them, uh, that, that's actually fine, put them aside. So he's faced with this rather, remarkable, this rather remarkable decision. He sees in his house an infant child 
And the child, because he has some remarkable composition, has convinced the ninja assassins he's not even in the house. They leave him there. An infant child, the wife is dead. Ito Agami, by the way, Ito Agami is played by Tamisaburo Wakiyama, whose brother in real life is Shintoro Katsu, the guy who plays Zatoichi. Right. You know, when I was at Francis Coppola's house, he had Shintoro Katsu's armor. It was almost exciting as finding out that you, in fact, choreographed Tamisaburo Wakiyama. Take some of these away and push them aside. Because this, uh, this is truly uh, an important he's thing. He's a piece of work. You know. He's a character. You know. uh, again, uh, Clayton, uh, like I said, we shouldn't use all of these cards, so take a bunch and push them, <laughs> and push them aside. Take a couple more if you want. Yeah. Okay, and push them aside. Now, Ito Agami is in, literally, in his own house at this particular point. He's in his own house. Um, take away a couple more cards. We need some, but take away, take away a couple of cards. That's fine. Ito Agami is in his own house. He has this child, Daiguro. And Daiguro has is, is got this amazing demeanor, but he still doesn't know what to do with Daiguro. He has to literally decide whether he is going to take Daiguro with him into this path of retribution, into purgatory, lone wolf unto the Hades with a baby card, or have to kill his own child. How does he determine this? I mean, a horrible choice for anybody to make. How does he determine it? What he does is to give the child the choice of a ball, a beautiful spangly ball, or a sword. And the sword is in its scabbard, you know, but a little of it is exposed where they, uh, just before the hilt, a few inches. And the child is now crawling around trying to decide, you know, is he more interested in the ball or more interested in the sword? And Ito Agami decides if the child picks picks the, the, the ball, it means he has a playful nature and he could never survive this particular journey. Hmm. If he picks the sword, it would show that he has the soul of a warrior. So ultimately, this is entirely about choice. You know, I think we can sense from the fact that there's six movies in the series, we have some idea might, what, what might have actually happened in this. Particularly number two, Baby Cart to the River Styx, where the Hidachi brothers, Ben, Ten, and Ray, create real havoc. But we're down to the choice. So here's denouement. This is what I want you to do, Leslie. We're down at the denouement. Think for a moment, and right now, put your left hand on one of those cards. Now. Put your right hand on a card. Now. Push them aside. The final choice will be yours. Push them aside. There are two cards left. I told you the final choice is yours, just like every other choice. Every other choice. Hand me one of those cards. Take as long as you want and hand me one of those cards now. Push this aside. One card in 52 which you have given me. Right. Now the choice of the ball and the sword is a big choice. It's yeah. the choice of life and death. But it's one in two. This is really impressive. This is 52 different objects. 52, and for the first time, we're going to look at the card which you gave me, and it is the two of hearts. Uh, and you can see, I, I know you've both been to Japan, which is why I had you here. You can read what it says on this card. I can. You, you can't? Well, you know, the, the, the really wonderful thing about these Japanese movies is that they're, they're often subtitled. Yeah. Yeah, you see, uh, on the other side, it actually, it actually says the two of hearts, in case there's any problem. And just in case you think there's any problem this way or not. <laughs> what do you think about that, guys? Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Great trick. Totally. Yeah. Great trick. And, you know, his... Uh... Uh, what's the effect? What's the effect? Ah, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but I do have an ADD problem. Can someone tell me? I I got lost in the in Japanese cinema, which I also love. What happened? What happened? No, seriously. Yeah, I know we narrowed him all. Yeah, did he, he predict the card? He, he had. Yeah, I mean, he had a card selected, and then he he made a prediction, and he spread the deck out, or didn't have a card selected. He just made a prediction and spread the deck out, and he had them eliminate sections until they got down to uh, the choice, you know, which was the last one. And the way he handled the last, uh, you know, four cards is especially cool too. I think it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all very fun to watch him do. Oh, it's incredibly fun to watch. And is the basic point that the prediction, after all that clean stuff, because it was effect wise, it was strong. It got cleaner as it went on. Is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the last four was cleaner than ever. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then the prediction was written in Japanese. Yeah. Right. Until it wasn't. Yeah. Right. There's a big lesson there about doing whatever the hell you want as long as the magic is strong. Yeah, it's true, right? <laughs> that is true. I feel like, like that's I said, really inspiring. And like I said, that trick is is well within magicians' abilities to do. I mean, that's not what I would consider to be like a, a you know, a super difficult trick, but except for what you said about Riggy J. Yeah, exactly. That exactly. is, we're not well within our abilities. No, it's not. 
<laughs> Wait, I want to find out because I get Adam. This happens this over and over again, and it happened last time. And I'm sorry, Mike, to like point a finger at you uh, and say, "Well, you weren't idolizing Ricky J 40 years ago." I'm not sure it. You know, it's like seeing something that meant a lot to you as a child. I'm not sure how much it means to a person who's just seeing it now. You know, I'll say the same thing I said last time. Ricky Jay's ability to present this stuff really kind of is the secret to his magic, right? Like, like the trick itself is a cool trick. But the way he takes you down the path is what blew those people's minds. And it's just great to see. Mm-hmm. There's also that great. confidence. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, there was also a great thing where, where when he's spreading the cards, you know, and he's got this left and right thing going on. It's I've never seen that before, really. Mm-hmm. Done that way. Mm-hmm. 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 Anyway. It's also like inspiring that, uh, like, if you think about it, everyone's got their gigs, opportunities to perform. And then you wonder, you say, if I were to try something like that, and say like that in whatever way you want. But there's a whole big premise, and it's a very far out premise, and it's only tangentially related to what's even happening. I'm telling a story with asides and references, and it's all about Japanese stuff, and uh, and it's only very tangentially related to what's happening. Uh, and you think to yourself, self, what if I tried that kind of stuff? How would my audiences react? How have they reacted? When I've done that kind of stuff, not even intentionally, but just sort of because I wasn't focused. And you end up wondering, I mean, I wonder if I think it's an important thing that many of us have discovered that the first thing you got to do is find an audience that is going to be a little more interested in a story you may want to tell. I mean... Do you guys feel like uh, you could do that trick for random passerby? Oh, no. And I think that's the thing about this collection is that it is cultivated audiences that are, you know, famous and quasi-famous people or famous people in cer- certain circles that are already of a certain, uh, they have a certain knowledge of Ricky Jay and they know of his work and probably saw him on Broadway and said, I would love to be in a room with him one-on-one and watch him do that stuff close up. It, and if you guys want to record it, that's great. You know, th- this is all hand-picked audiences that make this thing happen. So he's also got some rapport with these folks off camera before they sit down and start doing the trick. Because, you know, they're doing a trick with Ricky J and it's for his collection. I'm sure there's a bunch of, uh, you know, him finding out who these people are, finding the right effect that's going to jibe with their personality, that's going to make it shine on camera when he does these things. So it's... A very different situation to what probably most of us find ourselves in, in terms of, hey, I'm going to go do magic. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go do my six six DVD collector's set of my magic. <laughs> Adam, how long were you, uh, when you were, did this one of these things where the internet just bit you in the butt and said, just search different words. It's there. It's all there. Or was this like, Pass the spelling of Google down some hole. <laughs> I had to I had to search a little bit to find it, but yeah, I found a little honey hole of where. In fact, we'll do another episode may, uh, next time. We'll do another Ricky J episode because we've got more material that I think is unseen. You probably haven't seen it either, and you're gonna really die. You're gonna love some of the stuff that he does. Uh, so we'll, we'll watch it. We'll do another Ricky J episode. I think I, we should. I, I really I, I could watch it all day long. Yeah, I hear you. I could too. I could do. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you being here for Afternoon Astonishment, Conjure Community, World's Best Magic Club. Thank you, uh, Alex. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Aaron. I'm Adam Grace. We're so glad you joined us today. We'll see you next time. Afternoon Astonishments. <laughs>